Hello, and welcome to this video on designing and editing GDS files. In this video, we're going to look at how we can implement various manipulations on the basic shapes available in a GDS file. We're going to take the basic boxes and polygons that we drew before and see how we can change them more than just editing their vertices, how we can implement rotations, scaling, things like that. So in order to do that, we're going to need a basic shape to work with. I'm starting with a simple layout here with just a single cell, cell one on the top here, and a couple layers over on the left. I only really need one layer to start here, but I'm picking up where I left off before. So I'm going to select uh, the first layer, select the box tool, and go ahead and draw myself a basic box. I'm going to hit escape to go back to select mode, and then double click on this box to define its coordinates. I'm going to set up this box right at 0, 0 for the center with a width of 20 microns and a height of 2 microns. Give myself a nice, narrow, skinny box centered at 0, 0. So, so far we've done nothing new. This is all the kind of basic design, uh, implementing a, a basic shape that we saw before. What I'm going to do to, to implement some of these transformations is go ahead and select the box and go to Edit Selection. Here we have a whole bunch of different things that we can apply to the box. Um, or any shape for that matter, anything that we can select. The first few here are transformations. So these allow us to, for example, rotate. So if I click rotate clockwise, we've gone from this horizontal line to a vertical one. Very straightforward. This is pretty useful though. If I do control Z to undo that operation, I'm gonna select the box and I'm gonna now make a copy of it. So if I go edit, copy, this has the same shortcuts as a normal Windows copy and paste, control C, control V, so I've copied it. Now I'm gonna do control V to paste it. It pastes it directly on top of the previous shape. So it looks like one, but there's actually two right on top of each other there. I'm gonna click away and click back to just select the top one. And now if I rotate this one alone, you'll see that I formed a plus. This would be useful as potentially an alignment mark in your lithography pattern. You're already starting to create things that you could use in a lithography pattern. At this point, the, this shape is two individual boxes. You can see if I mouse over them, they get highlighted as two individual shapes. Before, we looked at the combination mode here, which would allow us to merge those shapes before as we were drawing them. However, once they're in place here, we can't use that combination mode. But there's other options for combining them together. Let's select them both and go back to the Edit Selection menu. And around the middle here, we have the Merge Shapes button. If we click this, we'll see that they're merged into a single polygon. That crossover in the middle is removed, and they form a single polygon with all those vertices. I can double click on it to see the whole list of vertices there. With that in place, let's go ahead and move this around. So if I select it, I have the Move button here, which lets me just click anywhere on my shape, and I can move it around kind of freehand with the mouse, place it anywhere I want. Let's say I want to be a little more precise with that. So if I select, I can go back to the Edit Selection menu, and I have two options here, Move By and Move To. Move By, you're going to enter the displacement vector that you want to implement on your shape, whatever direction you want to move in X and Y, and it'll move by that amount. Move To lets you enter a coordinate that you want to move the shape to, and it has these various reference points here. So if I, right now the middle is selected, so when I move, it's going to move the middle to whatever coordinate I want. I could select the bottom of the shape, the left, the right, any corner I want. Select, select the middle. We'll move that to 0, 0, and click OK. And if I mouse over this and then look in the very bottom corner of the file here, just down here, we have the two coordinates, X and Y. If I mouse over this point in the center, we can see that that's at 0, 0, which is the center of our shape, as we would expect. Okay, so we have this mark. Um, let's go ahead, let's say we wanted to make a outline of this mark in instead, just kind of a, a thin shape around it rather than the mark itself. So in order to do that, um, what I'm going to do, is I could draw kind of a shape around it, but that's going to take a lot of work. I want to use these transformations to make my life a lot easier. So let's take this mark, let's make a copy of it and give ourselves a second one to look at. So I'm going to do Control c Control v I'm going to edit the selection and move this one to the right by 30 microns. Let me zoom out, we've got our two marks now. So instead, let's say that we, we want to take the difference of two shapes. If we have one cross that's slightly bigger than the original one, then we can take the difference between them and kind of be left with just an outline. 
So we need to change the size of this, and there's a couple options for that uh, in this edit selection. So let's do edit. Uh, before that, let's make another copy, control C, control V right on top. And we'll do the edit, and first let's look at scale. Edit selection scale. Scale is going to increase the shape by a magnification factor. So every point gets moved from the center of the shape by the magnification factors. Let's see what that looks like. Let's enter a scaling factor of 1.5 and click OK. You can enter a factor less than 1 and it will decrease the size of your shape. Greater than 1 will increase the size. It's a, it's a simple multiplication factor. So 1.5, click OK. And we can see that every point has been scaled by that amount. This means that points at the end of the cross went a lot further away because they're getting multiplied as compared to these points closer to the cross. It's literally just a magnification of the shape. If I took the difference between these two, I'd kind of end up with a weird shape. I want just a nice uniform outline all the way around. So let's undo that, Control Z, select it again, and this time we're gonna do Edit Selection and Size Shapes. Size Shapes works a little differently. In, in some software, I see this called biasing. What that means is you're uh, literally adding width to the various X and Y coordinates. This one even allows for anisotropic biasing or sizing, so we can increase in X differently than we increase in Y. Let's not do that right now. Let's maintain a constant bias. Let's bias it by 0 0.5 microns. Whoops, 5. And click OK. And we can see here that all the points whoops, have just grown or moved away from their original edges by 0.5 microns. So it's given us a uniform kind of growth of our shape all the way around. Now we could take the difference between these two to give ourselves a nice outline. So again, if we had the ability to do combine shapes, we could use that to make a difference, but because these are already in place, just like we did merge before, we're gonna do a kind of a difference this time to get end up with just that outline. So we are going to, in order to do the difference, we're gonna select the outer shape first, and then I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and select the inner shape. That's the shift allows me to make multiple selections, and here the order is going to be important. I want to select the bigger shape first and the smaller shape second. The reason for that is when I go to Edit, Selection, I'm doing Subtraction Others From First. So I'm subtracting the things that I selected second and third from the thing that I selected first. So that makes sense here. I want to subtract the inner cross from the outer cross here. So when I select that, Indeed, it subtracts the inner shape, leaving me a nice outline. So I've got my kind of positive version of the cross here and my outline version here. Uh, if you're very observant, you might notice this little extra line here. The reason for that is that a GDS file doesn't have a concept of kind of a, 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 vo a void inside of a polygon. I can't have um, an outline of the polygon and then another outline in the middle. It needs to have it all one continuous shape. So really, this polygon goes all the way around here, up this side, and then continues in the middle and traces out the inside of this cross and comes across here. So this kind of infinitely thin line connects the inside to the outside. That's how it takes care of this needing to be one polygon for any shape here. And K-Layout is good. It'll kind of do that stuff automatically, so generally you don't have to worry about it. It won't really let you make a shape that it doesn't like. So that's good, we've got these, um, we've looked at a bunch of these transforms here, and we've seen how we can do some, uh, trans some rotation scaling transformations, and also some subtractions to get some really interesting effects here.